Hi. It is so cool to chat again. Uh, it's been, I think I talked to you in season two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's it like seeing a show to the end? I mean, what, what was the feeling on set when you guys were near the end? Oh, well, we knew before we began this season that it would be our last. Right. Um, and, you know, it was such a great working environment that everybody, you know, really saturated each day. We were really saturated in each day. They didn't take anything for granted. And that, that included right down to the very last minute until we wrapped. Right. And then there was lots of sad tears and champagne. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's lovely to be able to go out on um, a strong note. Right. You know, not because the show is flailing or failing. Right. Um, it's a really great learning curve, actually, to go out when things are good. And what's the arc going to be like for the characters? I mean, obviously, there's there's going to be turmoil, especially as there's changes in the Yeah, team. there are growing pains, I would say. Um, you know, this season we don't have a, a serialized arc that takes you from the beginning to the end of the season, so right. each episode is still a standalone story. And um, with the advent of Vega becoming the staff sergeant, there's a shift in the dynamics of the bullpen. Right. It leaves room for several new partners to come in, new detectives to join us as Angie tries to find her perfect fit. And uh, we see the toll that that... Um, distance takes on the codependence of Vega and Angie. Right. Vega gets to continue his romance with Dr. Betty. Uh, and we'll see that perhaps he's not as cut out for that position as he thought he was. Um, and I get to work with, it means I got a lot of rotating partners, which was great. Um, Victor Zink Jr. plays Mitch Konecki, who's with us right. for a little while. Karen LeBlanc, of course, excellent Canadian actress, plays Paula Mazur, who's my detective partner for five episodes. And then uh, Tommy Flanagan of Sons of Anarchy fame comes in yeah. as an Interpol agent who is also my sometimes partner and love interest for a while. Nice. Well, that's a very cool group of people to bring together. What was the dynamic like, you know, on and off set? Oh, happy. Always yeah. happy. Yeah, happy, welcoming, inviting. Everybody really... We had a very mature, vibrant group of people. And, sure. and that's the way each day rolled, was that way. It's a fantastic team. Uh, what's the difference then playing it now at the end with bringing stars versus, you know, other seasons? Do you notice um, the difference? Well, I think, you know, we know the show is sort of like second nature to us. Right. Um, but no, actually, I think everybody always, our show, uh, we got really good guest stars from far and wide because the material yeah. was good. And then word got out in the local Vancouver community, and I hope the Canadian community, that it was also a, an incredibly positive experience on right. set. And so we were, we were, dare I say, sought after for that reason. Everybody had a good time on our set. That's awesome. Yeah. I did speak to some of the guest stars, and everyone always said the same thing. It was always like, oh my god, it's such a cool set. Yeah the team, everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the environment. Uh, we've talked about this before, too, the whole fact of what the role Vancouver plays. Yes. So, I mean, for you, you know, is it saying goodbye to Vancouver a little bit? Or, you know, um, I'm sure you'll see it again. Well, I'm from Vancouver, yeah. so no, I don't have to say goodbye to Vancouver. Right. Uh, and because I've felt there so much, my relationship to the city is also really informed by my work life there. Right. Um, I want to stay in Canada, so, I mean, we'll see what happens for me, but uh, I think I'll always have a base in Vancouver as well. We hope to see you in Toronto more, though. I There's hope so, too. Such an so active, uh, yeah. active amount of stuff going on here. Yeah, it's some, time to sort days. of maybe go back and forth. We'll see. <laughs> so, in terms of Vega and that relationship, where does she... Where does she flow through this season with him? Because it's always been an interesting friendship. And, yes. And that whole boss relationship can be difficult, of course. Well, um, there's not... The thing is, is that there's not really any tension between us. The thing is, is we play two people who have a great ease and intimacy with each other. So, um... Obviously, with Vega being Angie's boss, they're not together as much anymore. And so right. each time they're together, we, there was a real yearning, a real missing each other that I think really informs uh, their relationship. Right. But um, Angie, you know, I think there'd be tension if Angie thought he wasn't doing a good job or wanted the position herself, but that's just not the case. Right. So uh, it was more... Uh, and it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that she would ever want to do. No, never, really. never. Yeah. She really, really... So it's not even a question of of competition. It right. was more just, I miss you. Right. I want you back kind of thing. And um, that goes, that's kind of woven all the way through. And does she ever find a nickname for him? 
She does not. <laughs> she does not. She does not. We I, we tried to bring it back, but yeah, no. I think no. that's half the fun, though, is the fact that yeah. you don't find one. It's, no. It's never properly pegged, if you will, yeah. I guess. So in terms of the other, uh, you know, characters, the other team, the rest of the team, uh, can we expect some sort of arc with how they finish things up? Like where we're going to leave them, I guess you should uh, say? Well, they're woven into the container of the stories. Of course. But we don't have a serialized arc. Right. Um, I think that that was a real writing feat for mm -hmm. our writers last year. Right. And uh, this year is like a return to previous seasons where each episode is a real standalone episode. Right. So you can come into the middle of the season having not seen the show and not feel like you're missing anything. Right. Um, but I think there's closure for each of the characters in a successful way, yeah. Hmm. Cool. I mean, I, I think saying goodbye to any character is always difficult, so finding, finding a way to say goodbye, I guess, is the... Well, the thing is, I think these thing. characters keep going. Right. We're just, well, we just don't see it. Yeah, what's the snapshot at the end is more like what it is. Yeah. Not, not goodbye. Yeah, they keep going. Yeah. You know? That's, cool. that's how I feel anyway. Yeah. Mm. So, what do you... Was there anything that you wished maybe had happened in the series that you never got to do? Or do you feel like you really got to do it all? I feel like I got to do it all. Yeah. I feel like we had another season in us. Right. But again, the, that would have been standalone stories. Right. And, um, I, there's nothing I didn't get from this show. I got, I got a lot of satisfaction and a lot of joy. And certainly seeing a romantic, a new romantic uh, angle in this season will be an interesting thing for Angie as well. Yeah, it was important that we really get that right. It's not a focus of the show by no. any means. It's just a nice color right. in what we've shaped. And um, Tommy Flanagan, is, it was a really uh, perfect choice because he was so imperfect. You know, he's he's really raw and real, and it was very important that um, if we were going to do that, it not be something that that was um, cliche or right. perfect. You know. And what part does professional the professional side play in their relationship? Can you speak at all to that? Like, can you repeat that? Well, what you know, because you know the professional side of the relationship versus the romantic side. Is there a bit of tug and play there? Uh, well, Angie, you know, has slept with lots of people she's worked with. <laughs> you know, you know, in in um, season two, it was right. Mark Cross and Boyd. In in or sorry, season three was Boyd. Uh, season two was Mark Cross. Um, and so it's kind of old hat. And that's the truth of it. You meet right. lots of people that you that's interact with and have relationships with at work. Uh, and so, yeah, that she meets him professionally, and, and there is a little tension there, but, cool. you know, she handles it. With, she's done it before. Nice. Yeah. So what are, just, I guess, to wrap up, what are some of the things that we can watch for that maybe some of the big moments in the season that are going to come through? Well, I'd say Angie working hard to find uh, a new partner mm -hmm. is a big one. And... Um, you know, more stellar sleuthing <laughs> and more um, very, very compelling victims and killers. I like the relationship in the first episode, the, the first one that airs. I mean, that's a great, uh, going off the vibe of the police dynamic, I think, and seeing how that all plays yes. out, I guess. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a different angle than we usually see. So yeah, like, it's a compelling episode, that first one. I really, um, I think everybody did a great job. Uh, our victim, I, I found complex and mm. um, and obviously John Heater our, our killer yes. uh, it was interesting to see him in a different way and uh, it was grand and splashy and all the things you hope for when you're returning to a series was he uh, as funny as you might hilarious. expect in person yeah. like hilarious <laughs> I mean really I, I did not stop laughing with him. <laughs> also I closed my eyes and it was just like watching Napoleon Dynamite it just <laughs> Yeah, it was really, it was fun working with him. Well, I love that he does the stand-up thing. I think that's kind of a funny angle yeah. on a comedian as well. Yeah. But, uh, and, I mean, that whole family dynamic in, I guess we hear a lot in the news about the family dynamic at play in murders and other cases. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to see that in the episode as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think our writers are always trying to pull from, um, obviously fantasy and an entertaining imaginary mm. world but also um, for themselves to ground it in some kind of reality where people find themselves in extraordinary circumstances mm -hmm. and I think 
I mean, I'd be quoting a, a wrong statistic, but I believe that most crime statistics, those kinds of violent crimes, happen right. with people that you're close to. Right. Well, thank you very much thank for you. the time. Pleasure chatting. Yes. Can't thank wait you to so see much. what comes next. Oh, you'll like it. Is there anything you can tell us? Uh, there's nothing else. Nothing you can yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.